are going to start a conversation here about the Mexican uh, tech ecosystem. So I'm going to invite here Israel Fons, Carlos Rocha, and Fabiola, if you please uh, uh, can share your um, camera and video, I will integrate you into the conversation. Carlos, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Miriam. Thanks for the invitation. No, thank you for coming here. Israel, very nice to see you too. Hi, nice to see you. Hello, everybody. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, so, Carlos and Israel, I'm going to start with you too while Fabiola is actually entering to uh, backstage. So, um, I would like first that the, the two of you introduce yourself because uh, Israel is an investor and Carlos is actually a, um, a business owner. To know first uh, from you, you know, let me share a little bit of your background and what you do right now in Mexico. So I will start with Carlos and then go with Israel. Okay, sure. Well, uh, as you say, my name is Carlos Rocha. I am the CEO of Magma Labs. We are a digital agency that focuses mostly on helping companies uh, uh, to innovate in the digital world. We help them in. We are focusing on e-commerce, fintech, uh, health tech. Uh, mainly we do that, uh, software development, mobile development, and user experience. Okay, so <laughs> Israel. Great, I'm just taking a picture of ourselves because I think it's amazing what you guys are doing here. Uh, Mexican awesome. Spotlight and Latam Startups. I'll introduce myself very, very quickly. Um, I'm an investor. Uh, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I lead an angel club in Mexico uh, that actually co-invests with other angel networks around the world. Um, we have about 18 projects in our portfolio. Uh, three of them have died and they're gone, sadly. Uh, another five probably are like zombies. We don't know what's going on or we do know something. And then um, we do have uh, uh, a, a lot of them that are actually growing, but just like you said, in very exciting times and everything. Um, I have invested in a fund in the in Canada, so we look at pro bringing projects from Canada to Mexico, uh, help them come into the market, and use Mexico as a trampling across to uh, Latin America. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just a, a member of the board of three uh, different funds that invest in early stage. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Uh, so I think Fabiola is still experiencing. Oh, here is Fabiola, actually. She's entering. Nice. So let, let's uh, wait. Hey, Fabiola. <laughs> so nice to see you. <laughs> so Fabiola, we just were introducing, uh, you know, uh, the panelists. Uh, if you can introduce yourself and also, uh, you know, say what you're doing right now in the government of Ontario, because you guys are, are doing a lot of work between Canada and Ontario. Uh, sure. Uh, and first of all, thank you for the invitation and uh, uh, for all the information you shared with the white paper. Very interesting. Uh, hopefully we had that type of information for other sectors. Uh, my name is Viola Sicar and I'm originally from Mexico City. I, li I have lived in Toronto for uh, 18 years and currently I work for the Ontario government at the uh, Ministry of um, Food and Agriculture and uh, Rural Affairs. Um, previously, I was working for the Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade in an international trade role, look, looking after the Mexican market, supporting Ontario is interested in uh, expanding their business into Mexico. Nice, thank you so much, Fabiola. Uh, so I'm going to go with the first question here is about what new technology trends, like we present some of them, but what new technology trends do you see in the Mexican market raising up during the pandemic? And I will start with Israel. Uh, so because you are an investor, I imagine you have to see a lot of decks and a lot of pitches. Uh, so what are the trends in your side that you have seen? Yes, I think uh, um, the, the, uh, the actual trend is people moving from the uh, real world onto the digital world, right? So that's, that's a global trend. We all know that that is happening. But there are other three areas in Mexico where this digital world has really impacted and a lot of startups have moved or reinvented themselves to move into. So we're getting a lot of edu tech platforms, you know, anything that's to do with education online, anything from primary school to uh, a, a, a specific courses to universities 
uh, platforms, etc. So we have had a lot of uh, of companies in technology moving into that. Startups are coming up with new business models for that. And along that side, obviously, we do have the last mile on delivery, right? The greatest challenge of having deliveries at home. Well, in Mexico, guess what? You were saying some very interesting uh, points on, on, on how Mexico uh, is technologically being integrated nowadays. So I'm sure the numbers that you're going to bring up next year will actually surpass what you have. Because maybe uh, the audience doesn't know, but um, Uber Eats, uh, this, is the, this is the first uh, and most important market in the whole Latin America, but also the first market where they got to $1 billion in sales um globally you know including us and, and other parts this is also the place where they get the most revenue for netflix in mexico city uh, they make more revenue in mexico than they do in new york uh, the, an, another part of it is fintech and and the companies that have to deal with is especially integrating these payments like you mentioned is like not everybody has a mobile phone with an integrated payment uh, system in it well, actually, in Mexico, you can go to the, you know, to the corner store, we call it, and you can pay for absolutely everything. You pay cash in there and then everything goes up to the cloud and it gets paid. So the last mile uh, um, uh, industry of how to deliver things to, to, to the homes, everything to do with food, with pharmacy products, you know, you, you have these um, uh, companies being integrated now, the startup uh, industry. And... Agrotech, you mentioned it. We get so many. We have an agrotech fund now. We're invested in absolutely everything that's to do with with agrotech and integrate um, the industry even more. So make it quicker from the producer to the actual uh, consumer. And this happens. Believe it or not, I live in a small town, although the office is in Mexico City. But I, um, with this, I will stop my intervention. Uh, this happens. I live in a very very small town. And here we do get deliveries home. You know, if we place an order yesterday, it will arrive today. For Mexican standards, that's very, very good. So those are the tendencies where we see technology coming in. And we're looking at startups that are making those tendencies become more efficient uh, and, and create better business models. Uh, so, Carlos, in regards of your sector, uh, like you probably are in contact to many other startups. I, I remember when you were a part of our program, you are also you were also coaching some other new startups, you know, and helping some others to understand better the market. What you have seen as trend in the in the market during the pandemic? Yeah, basically, also we have been working with with some uh, companies not here in, in US. Uh, I agree with Israel, actually, uh, the e-commerce adoptions grow exponentially in Mexico uh, because uh, in, during the pandemic. And also one of the things that you were saying about laptops is I believe that that, that is in one side because a lot of the people that was uh, like vulnerable, they started to buy in e-commerce, no? So, so they feel more confident using laptops, using this kind of devices than mobile phones. Um, and obviously, because e-commerce grow, uh, the other things that grow, uh, the, 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 there were the importance about the last mile delivery. Uh, a lot of the companies in the in, in the past we were uh, having a lot of problems with last mile delivery. So now, with all this uh, acceleration, uh, it, it was uh, at the end uh, had an impact over there and in payments. Uh, here in Mexico not everyone has credit cards or business bank even business uh, banks uh, accounts no uh, so a lot of people pay in the in these retail chains called oxo like 7-eleven so a lot of e-commerce has started with that options of getting uh, paid through those type of of, uh, of shops uh, also education because of the pandemic a lot of the food for those so uh, now the kids are taking classes online. That's why I have a, a huge, huge impact. And I, I believe another impact in the companies is remote work. A lot of tools around uh, remote work. That now, uh, I think this year, last year, one uh, law was approved by the Mexican government about uh, paying uh, the employees uh, in the, for the electricity and utilities and that. And a lot of companies now saw that 
they could continue working with the employees working from home. No, that's a, that, that was another thing, a huge impact here. And with all the e-commerce also fraud prevention. Now everyone is buying in, in, in now more people is buying in e-commerce. So you need to have better ways of protecting all the payments. That's what I saw. Uh, that's good to know, uh, Carlos. So yeah, yeah. very, very much in trend what uh, Israel also said. So Fabiola, in your case, you kind of are looking at the opposite size, Canadian companies that probably are entering in Mexico. Any trends that you have seen or any sp specific information that you are passing to these companies in, in order to attract them to certain uh, sectors during the pandemic? to what uh, Israel and Carlos mentioned, I think the biggest impact of the pandemic is the explosion of e-commerce and all the consequences of that, right? Uh, uh, so uh, a lot of um, opportunity for companies uh, that could help improve the online experience, how customers, how to provide better services, we, we see an increase in that. Um, similar, uh, the education is, of course, also a big uh, opportunity for Canada, uh, having um, a long relationship in terms of bringing uh, students uh, from Mexico and pretty much everywhere from the world to, uh, to Canada. That's, that's also an area with a lot of opportunities. And um, uh, Carlos was mentioning about uh, the payments online. And this has to do with what you mentioned uh, in the white paper, right? Uh, the fact that uh, less than 50% of the population uh, has a bank account, so that uh, complicates the online payment. So having the options for customers to pay online. Perfect. Uh, so the second question is more about, uh, you know, what type of startups or what type of technologies do you believe uh, Mexico is going to need uh, post pandemic? So this time I'm going to start with Carlos. Uh, Carlos, what do you think, like, uh, what type of technology startups or the Mexican uh, you know, population will need post-pandemic? Carlos, you're muted. <laughs> okay, that's the word of this, uh, this time, you're mute. Uh, one, I believe, is focus on mental health. Uh, with all this pandemic, a lot of uh, people has been affected, kids and adults, in terms of psychological health or mental health. So I believe that is one, of, one to be a need at uh, this moment, education and uh, agrotech, I believe, are the things. Israel, uh, what do you think is, uh, is going to be needed uh, post-pandemic in terms of technology? Yeah, I think uh, post-pandemic, we're going to have to look at technologies where we actually integrate physically more. Uh, we will need to learn to lose the fear of being together with each other. So any technology that will actually bring us together, I will welcome that because we do need to be uh, together again. But uh, there is um, there is something that um, I think the majority of us will want to uh, to see how we'll integrate, especially in markets that are in development, and that's to do with AI, right? Artificial intelligence. What role is it going to start playing uh, uh, with, with any of the technologies that we already or the markets that we already see? with the verticals, you know, to, uh, um, we, we are in the process of launching a $1 billion uh, fund out of the US to invest in the in the whole of the region, but in companies that are to do with AI, blockchain, and technologies that actually help you uh, to, to have a better life. So we, we believe that the times, there is a great opportunity in Mexico for technologies that are traditional and they're exploding everywhere else that help payments, that help for people to get services quicker, that help for, um, uh, uh, you know, for, for this consuming society to do it. But I think there is a technology that is required for us to enjoy more life, right? Because we're all too digitally connected and we need to have that. So I think that that will happen post COVID. We will have the new reality will be how we will connect. And, and I don't have any doubts that there will be a space in Mexico and Latin America for technologies to trial this because 
the, the culturally, like you mentioned, we are very close together. We are very touchy feeling. So we predispose to be close to each other. If we have technologies that allow us to do that, that integrate to us, uh, I think that that will be the future post pandemic. Okay, no, that, that's a nice answer. Uh, so uh, Fabiola, in your case, what do you think are the technologies that will be trending post pandemic? Uh, well, my view is a, a, a bit different more uh, from the international trade perspective and the big picture. And uh, Mexico is a country um, heavily dependent on exports. Uh, so I think uh, the startups that the market needs are those that will help the export sector uh, continue to grow, uh, meaning the uh, automotive uh, industry and uh, agriculture. Those are big uh, sector and important sectors for the country. So I see a lot of opportunity there. And also those are key um, industries where Canada uh, could bring uh, technology or, or new ways to do, to do things. So those areas that are key. Okay, no, that's great. Uh, Fabiola, I will actually ask you the next question because you can probably uh, also provide us a, a different perspective on that. And um, how Canada and Mexico can work together to promote technology exchange and partnership in the next couple of years. What are your thoughts around that? Uh, well, I will say that uh, supporting initiatives uh, and, or organizations like uh, LATAM Startups is a, a great way to uh, promote uh, uh, trade and uh, business between uh, Canada and America. And I mean, I have to say, I moved to Toronto 18 years ago, and when I uh, when I first came, my impression was no knowledge uh, of the region whatsoever. The only uh, uh, context uh, they had for Mexico and Latin America was a uh, uh, salsa party or tacos or uh, going to Cancun. And uh, the region has much more to offer, right? So I think there's been some uh, progress thanks to uh, organizations like LATAM Startups and also the work of government and different, uh, um, I mean, this is, uh, this has to be done not only by the government, right? Uh, the relationship between the private sector and also uh, the exchange of um, between educational institutions. So I think a more awareness, um, um, like the paper that you are publishing, more work, uh, like the government is doing train missions, webinars, and uh, putting together the opportunities with uh, between the two countries. I think we, we just have to continue uh, doing our part. Oh, uh, Fabiola. So Carlos, you were a part of our program a few years ago, so you already know quite a bit about Toronto and Mexico. What do you think uh, Canada, uh, you know, basically, you know, more like Ontario probably, but what do you, do you think we can do together to, uh, you know, work partnerships? Actually, my answer is similar to Fabiola. I was thinking what is needed to, let's say, uh, have an ecosystem of innovation. You know? And I believe that four things are needed, awareness, education, investments, and all the prototyping and investment. No? And I believe that the best way to promote technology and partnerships is through associations like LATAM. No? LATAM in that, in that time helped me to understand the market, what were the needs and everything. I believe that those type of links between Me Mexican government, uh, Canadian government and associations can help to understand better the market, the needs, to help the, the people in Mexico to understand what are the trends in technology and the knowledge. No? And also at the same time to help startups from Canada that want to come to Mexico, what are the current local needs? I believe uh, that would be the best way to, to promote this uh, adoption of technology in the next couple of years. Okay. And uh, Israel, in your case, uh, I believe there is a lot of work to do in co-investment. We have talked before about this. <laughs> what do you think is, uh, is needed to continue doing more partnerships in this area between maybe Canadian, startup, uh, Canadian investors and maybe Mexican investors? Yes, this is a call out to all the uh, investors. Sorry, I got a mosquito flying around. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, I think one of the uh, challenges for the investors is we have to, to take, you know, we have to jump in the pool together and we'll have to swim or, or sink. And we will lose some money sometimes because we're, hey, 
we're in the startup world, right? It's, it's, it's a risk. Uh, uh, and, and I know that um, sometimes it's easier to invest near a home and, um, and, and then sometimes it's, it's like you don't want to go to another country because you don't know what it will be like. And we'll have to start taking this trust issue as a main issue to resolve. Is the startups are doing it? They're going to your program in Toronto. They, you know, they take more risks. They go there, it costs them money because time is money. So they have to spend time there. But Carlos have mentioned about all the knowledge that he he gets out of it. All you know, co-investors, angel investors in Canada with NACO and Mexico and other investors in Latin America, we have to invest together. But we already doing what what we are doing in, in Angels Nest. We are looking for startups in Canada that want to come to Mexico. Set up office, uh, look for investment, and guess what? Have access to your more than 250 million people market. You can do it in Mexico, as you have said. We have trade agreements, we have law agreements, we have partnership agreements. We have loads of things that actually can make your life easier. And it's not that difficult. It's not just about going to Cancun. I can invite you to Isla Pasión, to Pitch at the Beach, of course. But it is it is about, you know, uh, what best place to to go into Latin America than coming through Mexico. Um, and, and then also, let me, let me mention, the past, what, six months, uh, less, uh, we had three, three amazing uh unicorns come out of mexico you know mm -hmm. we we had kavak we had clip we have another one i can't remember the name right now not i think is that but, but that's that's chilling and and what also the the unicorns that have appeared in other in other countries in latin america they had operations in mexico mexico was the main market for them because they came they, they, they absorbed a lot of users their sales were through the roof uh, you can ask corner shop what happened to them when they came to Mexico. Right. They had Walmart come in with them with big checks. They'd just been bought by Uber by $3.2 billion. And, and that's what happens when you go into a big market. And actually, the Mexican people are very easy to get along with as customers, as friends, and as in investors. So I would say to my Canadian investors, I already know a few of them, to yes, you know, come with us, bring your startups if this is the right market. Uh, and, and you will find that you can be more efficient in costs. You can also uh, be able to penetrate a very interesting market. And the weather is pretty nice all year round. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually, you, Israel, answered one of the questions from the public that about, you know, somebody wanted to know about the three startups that were unicorn level. Uh, so there you go. You, you gave some information about that. Uh, and I will go to the last question because we just have four minutes before we actually enter into networking. And I hope that uh, you three uh, will enter also to networking and so meet some people online. But um, so the last question here that I want to share with you is, is, is any advice for the Canadian technology companies entering the Canadian market? You, you already, uh, Israel, gave so very good points uh, in regard to that area. Any other advice that you want to give uh, Carlos, Fabiola, and again, Israel? I'll mention really quickly, and then yeah. I'll let my colleagues uh, do it, because then I'll grab the microphone, and then I won't let it go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. find, find a very good lawyer. You know, Don't come to Mexico without a local lawyer recommended to you that can actually move quick, that has an entrepreneurial mind, uh, and that can help you protect because everything else is like anywhere else, you know, business, you'll have to deal with some people that you like, some other people you don't like. Some people will take you out for dinner for 10 dinners and they won't do anything. And, uh, you know, some people will just like to show you around Mexico, etc. But if you protect it legally, you have a good lawyer, you know, you will find a way of doing business and you can do very good business in Mexico. That'd be my tip. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing, Israel. Thank you so much. Carlos, what, what is what you'd like to recommend for any Canadian company that is interested in expanding now? Uh, first, establish partnerships with local companies in Mexico to know better the market. The market is not the same than two years ago. Now it's more mature, so I believe it's a good uh, time to start investing in Mexico. Uh, the other one will be accept local payments. In your day commerce, please accept local payments methods, not uh, just because at the end, uh, the consumer here has a way to pay, you know? so understand that. Uh, I believe I agree with the get a, a good lawyer because the, 
the regulations in Mexico are constantly changing ar around labor, around payments, around things, no? So get a good lawyer for taxes and labor. Uh, and I believe Mexico has a good uh, pool of talents. I believe invest in developing that talent so you get the benefits of having good talent and a reduced cost. I believe the best way is to train them and, and you're gonna find in Mexico. Really good. And I want to say before Fabiola actually, um, uh, you know, close up with the, with some notes here, um, that the Canadian government actually has a program that is called Can, Can Export Innovation. And that program is actually covering legal cost for Canadian companies entering into a partnership uh, with, uh, you know, uh, with a partner, let's say in Mexico. So just take advantage of that. We are going to see uh, that as a part of our bootcamp. We actually have a trade commissioner that is going to be talking about that part uh, because this is important. You know, this this can be a big cost for the company, but it's covered uh, pretty much for can export. It's at seventy five thousand dollars, up to seventy five thousand dollars per company. So. Uh, Uh, sure, I will say do homework and uh, investigate the market. I mean, uh, in this time, there is so much uh, public information uh, of uh, great quality. Like I love uh, following uh, the reports from Deloitte and McKenzie. The, those are public. They always do uh, country profile. Uh, there is also America's market intelligence, uh, really good uh, reports on some of the uh, some sectors. And, and they've been following e-commerce for uh, quite a few years in the region. Um, and uh, leverage all the connections that you have uh, in the market. Uh, you never know who's gonna do an introduction or help uh, your business. And uh, Mexico is a country of relationships and trust. And um, you never know who will put you in the right direction. And last, I will say, uh, leverage all the resources that uh, the different jurisdictions uh, have to offer. Of course, uh, there are some uh, programs or uh, grants uh, offered at the provincial, federal level, and municipal. So take advantage of those. Sorry, I was muted. So thank you so much, Fabiola. And thank you, uh, the three of you, uh, Fabiola, Carlos, Israel, for being here today, for uh, you know sharing with us your knowledge about the tech ecosystem and, of course, you know your opinion about uh, how the trends are going. So uh, we are now starting the networking. Hopefully, you also will meet some people around. Uh, so this video is going to be recorded and passed to uh, you know everyone attendees here. And again, if you want to download the white paper, it's free to download in our website. Uh, thank you to our corporate partners, the sponsor, Bright Immigration, OVH Cloud, OCL Law, and please also visit the expo. Thank you, guys, and have a wonderful evening. Bye.